everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I am here with Emma today. I am super excited to be doing this video. Another fellow Tourette, another amazing advocate out there in the Tourette syndrome community. I'm sure some of you are already following her and if not, you're going to want to because she is one to start following. Um, she gives a lot of good information out there and shares a lot of her life with all of us. So Emma, thank you so much for coming on with me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Um, so as I've said in some of these videos, what I'm really just trying to do is show how different Tourette syndrome can be for all of us. And, um, you know, different kind. we all lead different lives. We all have different tics. We've all got diagnosed at different eight times, different ages and everything. So if you could just tell me like how old you are right now. And then when was the first time either you or your mom or dad, like if it was your parents that noticed first, like when you started having tics? So right now I'm 22. Um, but we started like the journey of trying to figure out um, like what was going on with me when I was four. Um, and then I was diagnosed at five because usually it takes like about a year um, mm -hmm. after like having, you know, two or more motor ticks and one or more vocal ticks right. uh, to, yeah, to figure out if I have Tourette's. And yeah. so, um, yeah, so it officially started at like four, but um, it's funny, actually, I was looking back at a, um, an old home video um, of when like a little like I was I think I was a little bit before I turned four and I had ticks in that video that I could oh. recognize that I don't think we realized um, when I was like even younger than that but yeah so I would say like it officially started at four. Oh wow that's really interesting especially looking back and finding a video like that and seeing it like in your younger self I'd be interested I don't know if we did that many videos or anything but That'd be interesting for me to look back and see. Like, I feel like I want to go and find some videos now and be like, let's see what I was doing here when I was a kid. Like, yeah, yeah it was like, it was kind of a discreet tick. Like, I think it was, it was like no, a nose scrunching tick, which yeah. is now it makes me do it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, it was interesting to see. Yeah, for sure. That's really interesting. So, um, through all of your life and everything, so were you ever, did you guys ever decide to go the medication route or non-medication? I know I didn't go on it till much later in life and I'm not on it currently. So I actually, I think around five, like right after my diagnosis, um, I don't know if it was right after my diagnosis, but you know, a little, a little bit after it, I started medication. I don't remember what my first medication was. Um, I haven't like kept track of my medications over the years in like a list or anything, but I've been on a lot of them. And just since I was five years old. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're on medication for it right now. Yes. Yeah. Do you feel that it does help you like, and are there any bad side effects or anything of the medication you're on now? Um, so the medication I'm on now, I'll just tell you it's Abilify. Um, okay. and uh, I mean, I've, I've made videos about that, so yeah. I don't feel uncomfortable sharing that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I don't experience any really bad side effects from it. Um, there have been medicines that I've been on over the years where the side effects have been quite a, quite a lot to deal with. Yeah. Um, but right now, um, I feel like it's the best route for me, especially because when I was in college for about <laughs> two weeks, I think it was, I tried to go off of medicine. I mean, I did it with my psychiatrist. Like I waned off and everything and um, tried to just be off of medicine to see what it was like for the first time. And basically since my diagnosis and it did not go well. Yeah. Um, I could barely even go to class. Um, it, it was, it was, yeah, it was really hard to, um, to just do normal things. So yeah. I decided that medication is the route for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that, I like that um, because I know me even included, it can be really hard for us to come to terms with the fact that we need to be on medication to help something. Cause for me, it was really hard to do that because it was so long I wanted to fight it and fight it and fight it. And then when I was in college, my ticks were worse than they've ever been because I'm sure as you know, college is crazy stressful. Yes. <laughs> and um, I was doing a lot of other things outside of college as well at the same time. And so I kept upping my medication. I kept beating myself up for, over it. And one person made an analogy because I did a video about medications as well. And it was like, I never even heard it, even though my family has probably told me, but when you know, when you hear it from somebody that's not like biased about you, it's different. <laughs> He's like, you wouldn't expect like a mechanic to not work out of a toolkit. So it's just the tools that you need to like live your life. And I'm like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> I don't know why. Because I would never, ever, like, discourage anybody from doing medication, but we're all our own worst critics, so 
it's just an internal monologue and fight that I had internally with myself all the time. Yeah, exactly. Like if it's helping you, you know, why would you stop? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> 100%. So I know you also, speaking of college, I know you just recently made a video about your life with college or Tourette's in college and everything. Sorry, my camera is not focusing. There we go. Um, so if you, can you like talk to that at all? Like were there more challenges going into college that you remember than when you were in like regular grade school and high school and everything? Like what was that transition like when it came to Tourette's syndrome? So, I mean, the, tra the, the initial like transition was kind of hard. Um, I, my Tourette's and like one of my com comorbid disorders, depression got really hard when I um, first, my fr during my freshman year. Um, just part of that was because I didn't have a roommate for like the first semester. It was like a weird thing. Um, and um, yeah, so some things got hard like that, but in the whole scheme of things, I feel like college was a lot easier of a time for um, my, my Tourette's and deal it, well, maybe not like, how my Tourette's presented itself, but dealing with it, like with education um, and peers, um, because I was able to create an education plan, kind of. Like I always had an education plan, like a, I had an IEP and then a 504 um, from elementary to middle school to high school. I, I always had some sort of education plan, but, um, and my mom usually helped work with that. and. Um, but in college, I was the one who sat down with um, the Office of Disability Services and I kind of decided what I needed. Um, and I worked through that. So I felt like I had like a lot, a big hold over like what my education was going to be like. And um, it's also just a lot easier in college because like um, professors don't really care when you get up and leave the room. Um, <laughs> If your ticks are getting bad, you just, you kind of just get up and leave, which um, I could kind of do in high school, but like sometimes, you know, teachers didn't fully understand. Right. Um, but, and there, and also I feel like peers in college <coughs> were a lot more understanding. And even if they didn't understand, they were a lot more open to understanding yeah. than like at um, other points, like high school middle school, elementary school, I feel like kind of in a way it progressively like got easier to tell people that I had Tourette's and explain it to them and they became more receptive more pro progressively through the years. Yeah. yeah that's really awesome I really like that and that makes a lot of sense to me that college like because like you said there's like there's more there's more freedom but then there's also more ownership of it like you said you got to develop that plan on your own so you were in charge of what was going to happen for you which I think can be really uplifting for probably a lot of people because we already have this thing that's in control of us so often of our lives that I think that can be really big for a lot of people and then also the thing of like like you said I like how you said like I can just decide in a college class like all right I need to leave right now and it's not a thing and I like that too because like when I would have like a really bad day I'd be like all right well I'm gonna write to my professor like I'm not gonna go to that class today but I'll make it up and it wasn't that big of a deal because I was, I was still a good student. I didn't skip my, my classes all the time or anything like that. But it was nice to know that I had that option and it wasn't going to be somebody like hounding me or anything like that. Yeah, definitely. Like a lot more independence and yes. freedom in, in, a, in the college <laughs> life. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, so uh, what I want to make sure I talk about too is Obviously, I, as I said in the beginning of the video for everybody, you're such a great advocate for Tourette's syndrome and you put so much of your life out there and everything. When did you decide that you wanted to start doing things like that? What made you want to become, like, basically just put all that out there and be so vulnerable to share your story with everybody? So I think it's, I was either 12 or 13 when it like officially started. I started out with um, a blog. I know I was in middle school. Um, I started out with a blog called, and I called it Life's a Twitch because I was like, haha, that's funny. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, yeah, so I started with the blog and I kind of like carried that into when I made the YouTube, but I made the YouTube because I realized like a lot of kids my age at least were not super into reading blogs yeah <laughs> and I was like okay what's another way that I can kind of like 
get this information to them. So I made my first video, which I think it's literally one of those like classic videos where you bring up a note card and it says things on it. And like I had music playing in the background. That was actually me playing on the guitar because I didn't know how to look up like how to get free music. Right. Um, because I was so young, I didn't, I don't know, um, and I was just had these, like, cards talk, 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 talking about Tourette syndrome, and, like, telling you that I had it, and my life with it, and stuff like that, and then from there, I just kept making videos, but it, I, over the years, I kind of, like, was never very consistent, especially being in school, and having to deal with school things right. I um, it wasn't until kind of recently that I started making videos like every week yeah. um yeah because I, I I used to do it every few months but um yeah it started when I was in middle school have you always been open with it like when you were in not in college and everything were you open with everybody like hey I have threat syndrome this is what it is like were you or were you more like reserved before you started hitting that like 12 13 age range I um <laughs> I think I was actually always pretty open with it. Um, even before I was like in middle school, um, in elementary school, my mom was actually, was a really big help with this. She would, um, I think she gave the, I have Tourette's, but Tourette's doesn't have me like documentary to like every one of my <laughs> elementary school teachers and like gave them like pamphlets of information. Yeah. Um, and I always had this really supportive guidance counselor in elementary school who would, um, kind of who would come into my classroom every year and kind of disguise my coming out with Tourette syndrome as a talk about like different mental health and neurological disorders and then mm -hmm. she'd come around to talking about Tourette syndrome and um she'd, she'd be like does anyone in this room know anyone who has that and I'd raise my hand and I'd be like oh I have Tourette syndrome <laughs> yeah. um that would kind of be like my coming out with Tourette syndrome yeah. moment in like elementary school um and then after elementary school I kind of just told my peers um yeah. just more up front yeah well, that's really cool because that's a really cool way to do it it like doesn't necessarily put you on the spot because you could not respond if you don't want to but it's also a really cool way for you to like tell everybody while you have somebody facilitating the conversation like because I know it, it was never talked about when I was in school I was the one doing reports on it like telling everybody like I I don't remember learning about it or a teacher speaking on it unless like I brought it up yeah which is what I hope to be a change. Like I'm like, I'm not asking for like a whole like nine weeks or a period or whatever on it. Like, I just want like, give it a day in health class, like tell people like, this is what it is. This is really what it is. Like something like that. Yeah, is at, least, one day. at least an in-depth mention. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like tell them that what it is and tell them that we don't just swear. Like mm -hmm. that do it's real and it's not a joke. Like that kind of thing. Like, I'm hoping so bad <laughs> that that something one day, hopefully we can make a change with all of us out there. Something's got to change eventually, I would say. Um, and while you're talking about doing your first video, you mentioned that it was you playing guitar and everything. So do, do instruments and music, I know I've, um, I've talked to you before and you said like dancing and everything helps your tics. Is, are those all the go-tos that you go to? Like, do you slow your tics down? Do they make them disappear or how does that work? I know it's different for everybody. Yeah, definitely. So first of all, about guitar, I don't really play it anymore. <laughs> um, I kind of, I played it in middle school and then I picked it back up in college for a little bit and then I dropped it again. I've just never been very consistent with instruments. But um, when I was playing guitar, um, I feel like my tics did decrease a bit because I had a lot of focus going on through like multiple parts of my body for like hands, arm movements, you know? Okay. Um, and I feel like focus is really just a big factor in ways that I reduce my tics. Um, but I, I don't, I, I think when I was younger, dancing at least, kind of, I think I used to describe it as that it would make my tics go away. Um, and nowadays, uh, I would say it just reduces it. But to be fair, I used to be like a competitive dancer and did like routines and stuff. And I was a lot more focused mm -hmm. in what I was doing. And now I just dance for fun. So it's, it's a little bit different. Um, and then like singing also helps like at least, um, make my vocal tics go down I think because of my vocal cords are like focused on doing right um something that isn't the tics yeah that's really <laughs> cool. I uh used to dance competitively as well and yeah it was definitely 100% I always tell everybody that was like my safe haven like that was finally if I was moving and flailing all about it's because I was supposed to but like you said it's more of a concentrated like thing because like for me now like if I'm just being 
like dump around the house dancing or whatever. I'll still tick, but that's just because I always told people because everybody would always be like, "Well, Brittany, go and dance. You can. You're a dancer." And I'm like, "I'm, I'm like a choreographed dancer. I don't like make these up myself. Like I'm not a good on the spot. Let's see what I can do, dancer." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. If anyone's ever seen any of my vlogs, um, I dance in them sometimes for fun, and um, the dancing is nothing like the choreographed dancing <laughs> yeah. that I'm. You know, I'm just messing around. Right. They used to tell me all the time too when um and don't get me wrong, I liked the game and I had the game, but like when Dance Dance Revolution came out, they're like, Well, you should be much better at this. I'm like, this isn't dancing. I don't just flop my feet around in a square motion. <laughs> this isn't what I'm used to. I still like it. It's still fun, but this doesn't mean I'm a bad dancer in real life. Yeah, I know, it's repetitive, like, foot movements, you know, it's just... Yeah, and having to get it just right when, like, that little arrow came down on the screen. Yeah, a bit different. <laughs> yeah. just a tad. Yeah. <laughs> so, being an advocate that you are, what would you say, like, what would be advice that you give to other people, like, if, if they're wanting to be an advocate, or just, like, just getting, like, their diagnosis, because sometimes people come to me and they ask me, like, I just got diagnosed, I'm not really sure where to go from here, and... It's kind of always a hard question to answer, I think, in my mind, just because our journeys are also different for everybody. Like for me, like in you, we sound like we were both kind of similar. We were both so open about it always. Mm -hmm. But that's just how I was. And I had my mom and my family behind me. So like those people that maybe don't have that, like what kind of advice would you give them as they're just getting into it or if they want to talk about it and they don't, I don't know, just living with it, I guess. Yeah, definitely. I guess like my advice would be to first off, like, find all the information you can about it because not only is it like good to know what's going on with you so that you can better like educate others about it but it's just kind of nice to like understand further what's happening with you and put names to things like, like yeah. even if you have a Tourette's diagnosis you may not know that what you're doing is like echolalia like in you know the um repeating I'm sure you know but I'll just yeah. say it the repeating oh. of like other other people's like sounds yeah. um yeah, like, it, you know, it, it's cool to, like, know what um, that's actually called and then be able to communicate that to others. So I guess, like, I'd say to start off um, by just educating yourself mm -hmm. further outside of the diagnosis. Um, and then from there, you don't have to become, like, a whole YouTuber or social media advocate, um, but just, you know, telling your friends and... Um, you know, further educating your family so that they understand you better, I think is just a, is, is a great first step, you know? 100%. And it's interesting you brought out, uh, brought up the repetitive thing. Cause I didn't, I learned that more recently over the years. Like I've done it. Like I repeat things like kind of in my head or under my breath, not a lot. Cause I don't have a lot of vocal tics. Um, but that's one of them and I'll do it and I'll whisper repeating it over and over and over to myself. And then like, my mind wants to like do it, see how fast I can do it at the same time. And I didn't learn that until just recently over the few years. So like, that's another thing too. I try to tell people like, you'll constantly be learning about your own disorder. Honestly, like you could be the most well-versed in it, but it's, it's so different for everybody. So there's always something different to learn and figure out about yourself. Like, and it, even with ticks, like it's almost, it's nice. Like, cause when I do these videos, cause I don't have anybody around me that has strut syndrome. Like I'm yeah. never around anybody physically, but it's cool to be sitting in these videos and just saying like, oh, well I do that too. Like, and then yeah. the other person like definitely gets it. Like we completely understand like what the other person means, like when we're going through it. Cause I don't hear a lot of, oh yeah, me too. When I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I ticked all night last night. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Don't. They want to understand and their heart's in the right place, but it's just that fact of like, they'll never truly get it. Yeah, definitely. Like, I don't know anyone in person that has Tourette's syndrome. I just know people through the internet. Oh, wait, no, that's just a lie. I went to, <laughs> because I'm a rising leader, I met people in yeah. person, but I don't have anyone in person like around me, like any like friends in this, like even in my state that I know of that are like, that I can just like go hang out with. But um, I mean, I've met people with Tourette syndrome because of my rising leader work with the Tourette Association of America. Um, we, we've done a training down in Florida and that's that was actually my first time um, really being in a room with other people who have Tourette's, which, yeah. was, which was great, um, but it was also, it was, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, because we, it, 
I always tell people because I tell like when I tell somebody that I that seeing somebody like do a certain motion can trigger me they're like so like engaged after that point they they think that part's so interesting I'm like yeah I was like if you and if I'm in a room with somebody else that's ticking a lot like we're gonna feed off of each other like it just it's just gonna happen it's not that one of the others mocking the other but like I could never have a tick but I could be around somebody that does that tick and then I have that tick now Mm -hmm. in my own way because it's still going to be probably slightly different to however my body decides to make it happen yeah exactly like I've and, and and even like and it doesn't even have to be someone with like a tick doing the thing, you know, like when I was younger, um, my, when my brother was younger, he would, uh, do repetitive sounds. No, no. Okay. <laughs> but, um, um, he didn't fully understand because he was so young. Yeah. Uh, why he had to stop. Um, and, but he, so he would keep doing the sounds and I, and I eventually came up with this explanation of, you may do this for seven seconds, but I'll do it for seven years. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's a really good explanation. And I have uh, repetitive sounds, but a lot of facial movements, like when people that move their eyebrows a lot, like when they're talking, there's a certain comedian that I like, I like to watch, but he moves his eyebrows like so much. I swear they go up and down his entire forehead and it just triggers me so much with my facial tics. Like that's like my number one trigger is a lot of facial movements. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's just because, and of course, now. No, so I, I, I'm probably going to be doing facial movements <laughs> now. <as well. laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if it's just because my body finds it so easy to do the facial tics because it's a quick, at least that one tick, not quick as in it won't stop. But um, but yeah, those facial tics. That's my biggest trigger. I think is that, and like maybe maybe some noises just because I have a tapping tick as well that I have to do. So if I hear like when I move my mouse around, I'm hearing the sound of the mouse like moving smoothly. Then I have to like start hitting it and slamming it like on the desk. I do it all the time. I hate it. It's my least favorite tick that I have. Yeah, no, that sounds like stressful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mostly don't like it because it's the one I do. Like, I'm not in the building anymore right now for work because of the COVID stuff going on. But that's the tick like everybody hears because obviously I'm hitting my mouse on my desk. So people hear it. They claim that yep. they don't, but I think they do, and they're just trying to be nice, which is fine. Yeah. Hear it. <laughs> so that reminds me of a um, of a time. Another tick that's not a vocal tick that you can hear is clapping. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember one time I was at this camp, and like it was overnight, and um, I was doing my clapping tick at night. And the next morning, one of the like um, adults was like, oh yeah, someone was trying to clap some mosquitoes last night. And I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Cause yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I just like, there's, you know, disclosing your Tourette's is a, is like a really good thing and can educate a lot of people. But sometimes I think like you just let some, something slide, you know? 100%. I remember one time I used to work at a bank. I was a bank teller and I was like doing this stuff on the computer or whatever, doing their transfer, whatever it was I was doing. And I was moving a bit in my seat. Cause when I do my stomach tick, sometimes it'll like jump my body a little bit. And the guy asked and we always had music playing. He's like, Oh, are you dancing or whatever? I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't feel like, like you pick and choose your battles. Like sometimes I want to talk about it and tell you this whole life story of mine, but other times I'm just gonna be like, yeah, that's what it was. Like, no big deal. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm working right now. I don't want to like go into the whole process right. of explaining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've actually had someone, um, say to me before, um, a after I, um, like told them that I had Tourette syndrome, they were like, Oh, I thought you were dancing. So <laughs> kind of like that. They were like, Oh, I thought that was just like you dancing a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I like to dance, but I just don't just do it all the time. Yeah, I know. It's not a 24-7 thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you mentioned being the ri rising leader, right, is what it's mm -hmm. called. Yes. Um, I'm unfortunately out of the age gap for anything that they have like that. I'm hoping they make an, ad an even further adult one, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What is that like? Like, how did you become a part of that? Because I'm sure that's something a lot of people could be interested in watching. So I, oh my gosh, how did I, like, how did it start? This was, like, over a year ago that, like, I applied for the process. I think just because I, like, keep up with the Tourette Association of America so much 
I just like found out about the rising leader program. And then, you know, we had to like write something and send in a few different things, um, uh, to just to, to apply. And then I had a phone interview and, um, yeah. And then after that, I got told a little bit after the phone interview that I got like, I guess, picked to yeah. be, you know, I just was accepted into the rising leader program. And then from there we had a training down in Florida, which actually me and my boyfriend, um, I, I was working at the time, uh, back where I lived at the time. Uh, we, well, I, I couldn't get off of work. I asked like in advance, but I couldn't get off of work. So we actually started driving around 6 p.m. until I live in North Carolina so okay we went from North Carolina to Florida starting at 6 p.m. got there at like 4 a.m. and then the next morning at like 7 a.m. I started my rising leader train oh gosh <laughs> yeah but um yeah so uh we learned like a lot of different things for like the whole day there um just like you know, stuff about Tourette's in general, um, stuff about, like, there was, like, a resiliency thing, um, there was, um, a man who'd been in the military there, and then there was stuff about networking, and then just, like, showing how we can, like, do presentations as rising leaders, um, which, you know, I actually haven't done, a, like, an actual presentation with the, um, uh, like, PowerPoint that they gave us because I by this point I was already out of college and I didn't have like anywhere to really go to like I didn't have a very convenient place and then I ended up moving and all that anyway um so we have um meetings every once in a while now zoom meetings you know and um just talk about all sorts of different things and um how ways we more ways we can advocate and a lot of my advocacy is just is through social media, but I feel like that's like a very powerful platform. So yeah, yeah, 100%. definitely. That's really, really cool. I always see all that kind of stuff that they have going on and it's always awesome. There's like that twinge of jealousy. I'm like, I just want, I want to be a part of the association more. Like let, let me yeah. in. <laughs> I think, I think it's been, you know, just a really great way to like advocate even further, you know, and yeah. just learn more things. So yeah, 100% and being, like, like you said, even just being in a room with other people with Tourette's, it's like a, it's kind of a blessing and a curse all at the same time because of the tick situation. But just knowing, like, it's just knowing, like, we're not alone, kind of cliche, I guess. But yeah, um, definitely, yeah, it's helpful. And I know everything that you're doing is helping so many people as well. Like everything that you do, I've been following along and I've been following more closely more recently. And just because I've been trying to expand my reach even of Tourette syndrome and learn other people's lives like everything that you're doing I can't even imagine how many people that you're helping and touching their lives so it's I want to make sure like you know like everything you're doing is really really great and like I'm a big fan of thank yours you so in general. Thank, thank you you're welcome. I'm also a big fan of yours so <laughs> well thank you I appreciate that as well so I, have, I only have like one more question if unless something comes up while we're talking, but I always, I try to ask and I don't always get to it. So when it sounds like you do have a pretty good, um, family and a pretty good, like, uh, like support. Yes. <laughs> support system. Sorry. My brain is like fried today, but you have a really good support system. Has that always like been the case? Have you always had friends that were like really accepting of it or was it a little more difficult? If you don't want to talk about that, that's completely fine. I just like to ask. Mm -hmm. like, Definitely. Um, I, so for the most part, I would say, like, if I'm going to put it down to a percentage, like 95% of my friends um, have been supportive. And uh, I, I think about, like, 100% of my family has yeah. been supportive <laughs> and understanding. But I have, I'll, I'll, I'll tell a story. There was um, um, a girl in middle school. In middle school, you know, you have friends, and there's not always – a great reason for you to have those friends. Um, yep, and, I, I know that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and she's just, um, she was like my best friend at the time, but I also felt like kind of like trapped in a friendship, but I was also in middle school and I didn't really understand right. how to, yeah. Um, so she would tell me a lot, like when I was like ticking and stuff, she'd be like, you're so weird. Like, why are you being, and I had already explained to her what trust and yeah. she was and we were best friends like right. she, she knew what Tourette's was and everything and she's like she's like stop being weird stop being weird and then at one point I, I like remember it pretty vividly like we were near the um the water fountains in in school and I had a squatting tick which was actually like pretty prominent in um 
during this time in middle school. And so I went down to do my squatting tick and she he- tried to hold my body up. <sighs> and, like physically like suppress me from doing the tick, which I'm sure you can imagine is, you know, I mean, if, yeah. it's, if it's happened to you or even if it hasn't, you know, you can imagine how that feels. Right. Yeah, that was, um, that's probably like, the most, um, besides like other, like other people have definitely teased me, like these mm-hmm. boys on my bus. Um, yeah and stuff like that but that was that was one of my more like one of my bigger moments that I was like oh this is this is not okay this is something that should not be happening you know yeah um but yeah so most of my friends though have been good (laughs) good um if you don't mind sharing too just because I know a lot of people will ask me like they'll say like, well, I know somebody that has Tourette syndrome, like what can I do to help them? So I just kind of always share like what my friends do. Like for me, my friends are family. I, I mostly spend the most time with my family, but, um, I just tell them, I'm like, they, they pretty much pretend like I'm not doing it. And honestly, that's the best for me. Like if it gets really, really bad, they'll say like, are you okay? Like they'll bring it up in that sense. Or my, um, my husband, he's amazing. He's fantastic with it. He's so patient. And like, he just kind of has a little thing, and I don't even know if he realizes, like, how much, like, that little thing means to me, like, if we're out in public or something, and I'm ticking really bad, like, I'll just feel his hand on my back, like, yeah. it's kind of like a, hey, I'm here, like, are you okay, but without verbalizing it kind of thing, or yeah. something, so ask me if it's getting really bad, because I, a lot of times when I tick, I don't breathe, or I'm holding my breath when I'm yeah. ticking, and so that's when, like, when I'm starting to, like, expel breaths of air, like, bad that's when he's like are you okay like is everything fine and I'm always like yeah I'm good don't worry and that's yeah. stuff that I don't mind but I always tell them like talk to them like that's the most important thing you can do is like ask them like what they need from you or what you can do to make it better but so is that kind of similar for your for your fans friends and family um yeah definitely so like I think pretty early on my family realized um that you know not pointing them out is is probably the way to go because you know especially when if if they are pointed out um because sometimes like they'll slip up and like I'll have something that's maybe like a new tick and they'll they'll be like are you okay or like why did you just do that because like they don't know the tick yet um and I'll be like oh yeah it was a tick and they'll be like oh okay never mind because like when people do bring it up it makes me want to do it more um but yeah my family's been good about that my friends have been good about that and my boyfriend is like really really great about like just like he doesn't, he doesn't, like, bring any attention to them, but, like, the same thing if, like, if, you know, if my ticks do get bad, he'll be, like, do you need anything, or, like, Mm -hmm. you know, just, yeah, just very supportive, so I've been very lucky to have people, for, for the most part, be good to me about that. (laughs) Good, so if you don't mind me asking, because I, again, I know a big question in the truck community, or a big worry, and I know it was a worry of mine that I didn't really vocalize when I was growing up, is dating, and finding somebody that, would I always put it put up with me which is a bad way to put it about myself because I would never say that about somebody else but it was a worry of mine and I never wanted to tell anybody because obviously if I'm telling somebody it's somebody that like I love and they're gonna be like oh don't think that way blah 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 and I'm like and I just always knew they wouldn't get that kind of fear in my mind and it sounds silly to say that you're afraid of that I guess but I know people are like were you did you tell him right up front? Like, was it a little while into it or did he already know you prior? So he already knew you had it. So yeah, my boyfriend right now, um, we actually, we had dated in high school and mm-hmm. then like we broke up in high school and then like just reconnected later. And now we've been dating for like over a year in our, yeah. sec- in our second, in our second term. Um, <laughs> and, um, but uh, so he's known me since high school. He's known me for a long time. And like, he, we knew each other a bit before we dated and um he 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 knew about my youtube channel um we had like mutual friends and like he just even before like the first time that we met i think he already knew that i had Tourette's yeah. um so he's been great about that but uh, other boyfriends in the past um not always not always been okay <laughs> i had one boyfriend who was like who pretended like he was really supportive. Um, he'd be like, oh yeah, your YouTube videos are great. What you're doing is great and stuff. Um, and like, I'm here for you, whatever you need kind of thing. Um, and he, he didn't like point out my ticks most of the time either. And he, he was good about that. But then I'd tell him there'd be certain things that like, you know, 
bothered my tics and he wouldn't stop doing them. Um, like for instance, like, you know, if in the middle of the night I would, you know, I don't like, I, at, at least at that time I didn't like to, for someone to touch me in like any way. Yeah. Um, or else I'd wake up and then like once you start ticking when you wake up you really like you're really woken up yeah and um yeah he would he would he would still like try to put his arm around me and do all that stuff throughout the night and he just I'd bring it up in the morning and be like oh yeah or like like I forgot or whatever like but you know he uh, yeah and then also he sent me a um a text once that was like uh it was about it was like an article about um, video game addiction, and he was like, this is why I don't believe in that mental health stuff, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, so you're invalidating, like, all my comorbid disorders and all that stuff, yeah. so, um, just, like, that's, that was, that was the only instance that I've had with dating that was, like, not very positive, but other than that, other boyfriends, um, I've, I, I tell, I tell them usually before I'm even dating them, yeah, um, they usually know that part of me, and, whether they choose to be good about it or not is up to them. So yeah. right. that's what I always said. I always kind of use it as like my indicator, not saying that all oh, my boyfriends are great because I probably yeah. we're not, but um, it kind of was my thing where I'm like, all right, like I have Tourette's, like, let's see how you're going to react to this. Like some would make jokes like at first and um, some would make, I remember one made a joke about, something about it to be kind of like a sexual thing and I'm like this isn't that's that's not what that's not how it, yeah <laughs> yeah I'm like I've had a lot of jokes thrown my way but that's a new one and I don't like yeah. it <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> yeah it's very weird and I think that's a good though like I think it's it is almost like a thing that we can use to like see where the good ones that were like like you said like that one seemed like he was good but then there's like little red flags like yeah. they're hard for us to kind of pick up on even while they're happening like we know they're not right but mm -hmm. when you like somebody it's a little more difficult like I completely get it but like those all add up and then obviously if he sends you a thing and says that I don't believe in mental health uh, I know <laughs> which is beyond me yeah like I don't I don't know how well I would have reacted to that <laughs> Person. Yeah, I was very upset. Um, I, I, I should have broken up with him then and there, but you know, sometimes yeah. when you're for, far into a relationship, you're like, okay, we're going to like mend this part yeah. of it. I don't, it's, it, yeah. <laughs> right. I, I get it 100%. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you have somebody now that seems to be better in understanding and obviously likes you for who you are, everything comorbidity included. And I always tell people like there's there is somebody for everybody out there. It just takes like some time, sometimes like, believe me, like I, I've seen people find love in the, the weirdest of ways. Like you never know what could happen. Like you can't tell yourself that it's never going to happen. And it's easy for me to say now because I have, I married and I used to think that yeah. <laughs> so it's always like an easier said than done kind of thing. But I always tell them like, just you just have to be honest and open, like, because I've always been the same way, like, I'm going to tell you what I have right now, because I'm not going to start, like, if, of course, my dog, Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to start, like, giving the chance of falling in love with you, and then finding out, like, that you're a jerk, because you can't accept the biggest part of my life. Right, exactly, yeah. And that's what I told my husband the day I met him, like, look, I have Tourette syndrome, sometimes I move around a lot, some days are... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, I don't, oh yeah. So I told him I have Tourette syndrome. Like it means I can move around a lot. Sometimes it can make noises. Some days it can be so mild that you barely even notice it. Some days yeah. it can be the second I open my eyes and it's just going and going and going. And I need you to know, like, that's not something I can control. So if this isn't going to work for you, then this needs to be the last time we do this. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. First and last time. And I always just kind of see how they react. Like, not necessarily if they ask me if I swear all the time, because I try to be, even though I hate when people ask me that, I try to be sympathetic only in the fact that, like, it's no ignorance to their own. Like, they have no other resources. Like, if they're just watching television and movies, like, that's all they know. So, yeah. like, that's yeah. not necessarily their fault. The only thing that gets me is if it's somebody that, for some reason, my Tourette's hasn't come up, and I've talked to you, and I've known you for, like, months, and they're like, so you swear all the time, and I'm like, have have you heard I'm me? About to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I only swear if I'm like really mad. And yeah. even then I try not to. It's just not in my vocabulary at all. 
Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say it all because sometimes it happens, but, but that's when I always have to try to go into it. Like, cause I always want to tell them that it's not as many of us, but I also don't want to invalidate anybody that does it at the same time. And it's just that fine line. So I always try to make sure I explain like both sides to the best of my ability since I don't have coprelia. Yeah. It's difficult to explain to somebody else, I guess. Yeah, I literally today, like, a, a few hours ago, filmed a video that I'm going to post, like, next, well, at this time, but that's, this video, video is posted, it will already be posted, but um, <laughs> I literally today filmed a video about coprolalia and then also, like, the other copro-type um, yeah. things, um, and I, yeah, it's, like, you can talk about coprolalia without being, like, oh, my God, no, like, I don't swear, like, right. you know, like, without, like, condemning it, like, being, like, okay, these, you know, it, it, not to make it seem like a bad thing, you know, um, just because, you know, people with threats, there are people with threats who do swear, um, but, like, yeah, I get what you're saying about, like, people, when people ask you, like, if you swear, it's, like, how, how, I mean, like, if they, if they've only had this certain information, how do they know that I don't, unless they've known me for a while, and right. I haven't been swearing, it's, like, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, have you, have you seen me do that? Yeah, like, have <laughs> you, you heard it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for doing this for me. If there's anything else that you want to talk about or anything like that, um, I know if anybody wants to find any of your information on Instagram, you you are like a Twitch Emma, right? Yes. Yeah. And then on Facebook and Twitter, you're just, it's just life a, tw life's a Twitch, right? I think, oh my gosh, I wish I knew. Oh, no, um, to, I should have come think about this. it looking back on them. Yeah, I think on, I think on Facebook it might, be yeah if you just look up life's a twitch that'll be me and then um on twitter it's it's life's a twitch okay. because i couldn't get the life's a twitch um okay. by itself <laughs> yeah, somebody took it already <laughs> <laughs> yeah someone else has it <laughs> all right well if, is there anything else that you want to um say that i haven't covered or anything like that i want to make sure i include everything that you want to talk about um, I guess, I don't know, I, I guess the only other thing that I would want to say is that, um, I know this video will be posted, like, way later, but just with everything that's happening right now, um, I guess, like, that, I'd like to mention that Tourette's Advocates, um, you can, you know, I, you know, you can, sorry, you can, um, push your advocacy further than Tourette's Syndrome, and, um, I just think that it's important to like be signing petitions, donating if yes. you can, you know, um, I'm saying you can a lot, but if you can, um, and yeah, I just wanted to bring that up that like with everything going on that there should be advocacy outside of Tourette's syndrome as well, because we have platforms where we can do that. So Great. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. There's definitely millions of ways to help whether you can be there physically or not or financially or not personally. So I'm glad that you brought that up because it's very, very important. Like you said, you can push your advocacy for those things that are obviously important because it still affects people also, even in the trust center community. So right. we want to include each and every one of them. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for adding that on at the end. I'm really glad that you brought that up, like I said. Um, and thank you for everything that you're doing. This was great. I loved being able to talk to you and chat with you a little bit and kind of See you face to face a little besides through the, uh, well, I guess. Well, that's well, it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have for today. Like I said, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was great. <laughs> <laughs>